<laughs> Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. Here we are today for a Calcio Mercato special. The bomb has gone off in the Calcio Mercato. I did a live stream yesterday on my channel talking about, oh yeah, you know, there's not much going on. I'll keep it No, it's been the most boring Mercato ever. And yeah. it's like literally nothing's been going on. And, and all of a sudden it's like everyone, it's like everyone's been biding their time. And I really like this, what they've done this season. I hope they can always do it, that mm -hmm. they play games and then the last weekend of February when all the deals are going, like they do, they take an international break or they just take a break and let the let these guys rock rock and roll because it just, it's been it's been a nice change. Um, yeah. January usually ha has a lot going on, but I mean, obviously because of COVID, nothing has happened. Yeah, and the, the voice of Nima Tavali Rutsari that you're hearing there, um, of course, <clears throat> the um, you can hear him on the Italian Football Podcast, semperint.com, Studio Inter. Thank you for joining me, bro. I've invited ah. you because this madness that's going on today, I just needed someone to like have a <laughs> you know a conversation with. I didn't want to be mm. ranting about it myself. No. And let's get straight into it, bro. Like we'll talk, we'll talk about obviously the Vlahovic uh, to Juventus yeah. and stuff. I, I made a video on it today already on my channel, but. Robin Gosens to Inter looks like, I mean, all the reports are saying that it's pretty much almost a, uh, a done deal. Uh, they're talking about, you know, Skira saying 22 million, I think, or Padula saying 22 million plus bonuses. Um, what, do, what do you make of it, bro? Like, Robin Gosens to Inter, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, f look, when he's fit, and if he is fit, we're talking about, if not the best left wing back, then certainly one of the best left wing backs in the world. Mm -hmm. And he's only 27, 28 years old. So he's a peak. This is his peak. Um, we've seen what he's done year after year after year at Atalanta. Um, so there's no doubt that this is an absolutely potentially top one tier signing. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and from what I've understood, it's he wants to join Inter now. He's, he's completely accepted it. They're working on the the formula of the of the deal, and you know, an Inter want to want it to be a loan. I just had this confirmed before I went on your live stream that Inter want this to be a loan with an obligations that similar to to the Korea deal, um, uh, in the sense that because a lot of people were confused about that, they thought there was a loan, but it wasn't. It was a loan with an obligation, which became a permanent transfer in February after yeah. the first point in the Serie A was won. Um, that's more to do with liquidity and also, you know, bookkeeping reasons. And I think that's what they're working on, Marotta and Inter, to, to with Atalanta. But one thing that is certain is that, I mean, it's already been at the level of Steven Zhang and Percassi, the two presidents have spoken. And mm -hmm. when you reach those levels, um, then the deal is done. Um, we're talking about a player who has 15, 13 months left on his contract. He's not going to extend made that absolutely clear and so yeah it, it is it is it is a good signing it's a marotta signing um mm -hmm. it's 22 i mean i th i think the final deal would be will be around somewhere around 15 to 22 um i don't i don't think it will be 30 million um I, that I, that gazetta reported because mm -hmm. i i find that rather strange um because there's no one, no one else really asking. The only club interested is Newcastle, and Gosens absolutely does not want to go there. He's made yeah. that very clear by his representatives. He doesn't want to play in the championship, pretty much. <laughs> so um, no, it's 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 an interesting deal. I, I like it. I think it's a fantastic deal. I think it's a it's an important deal for Inter to make after three windows that have been absolutely or two transfer windows, three transfer windows that have been. Let's be honest; they've been absolutely horrible. Um, it's been absolute misery for Inter fans, let alone to cover it and try to, you know, like keep up some form of professionalism and not want to send out a, you know, a Karen tweet, a series of <laughs> Karen tweets, just cussing in every language I know, and I speak six. Yeah, because it's been so frustrating. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially last summer where. You know, we didn't even Inter fans didn't weren't even allowed to celebrate the scudetto. We choked on the celebration. Was it Literally like three days? Choked on it. <laughs> <laughs> we choked on it. They they they, we, they had to do a Heimlich on us because we were we were barely like it was it was the worst scudetto celebration I've ever like honest to God, it's the worst scudetto celebration. It's it was like it was literally like yeah we won and here's mm -hmm. a here's a frying pan to the back of the head. Congratulations, we won. It's like thanks. 
I mean, it was horrible. It was absolutely <laughs> horrible. Um, it was drop kick to the groin, and it was not fun for anyone. And then and it kind of went on for the entire summer. And then the Lukaku situation. I mean, as if as if that wasn't bad enough that Conte resigned. Let's let's rewind. Let's re- rewind everything here. Okay, let's remember. Conte resigned, all right? And we were barely, you know, we, we almost lost out on Simone. Was, there was talk of Mihailovic at some point. The players were know. still hungover. <laughs> the players were still hungover. And there was talk of Sinisa taking over. They got Simone oh, okay. over the line. And then it was, you know, Hakimi's going to be sold. The mm. Kurva came to the offices and demanded a meeting with Marotta. Then we have the Euros and Christian Eriksen's heart stops um, in the middle of all that. And it's like, okay... That's that's his inter career over. Hope he recovers, mm-hmm. and then before that's over, all right, Chalanoglu. I mean, everyone, you know, we, we it was a free. I thought I still, you know, I said at the time, and I think it was the best deal that they could have made, but no one expected it to be good. I mean, there was quite a lot of Inter fans that were very critical of it, and you can't really blame them given how inconsistent Chalanoglu was before joining Inter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Lukaku deciding. Saying all oh, summer how much he loves Inter and I love Milan and all of this and I'm and he's like bye, <laughs> and then Edin Dzeko's the replacement and I mean and and then Joaquin Correa and it was, it was just it was horrible. I mean the only good thing about it was Denzel Dumfries. I think that's the only signing that Inter made that I felt like well actually okay there could be something here. Even though I was a little bit insecure because I mean going from Holland to the Serie A is a big it's a big step. But that felt a little bit like, okay, this is an exciting play. He's a young player, and mm-hmm. it was rather cheap. But before that, it's been absolute misery. The Mercato last January was misery. The one before that, when Antonio Conte sulked his way to, to uh, Vidal and Kolarov, when we had Tonali. I mean, it, it was, it's been horrible. So this is an important statement signing, that Inter are back, and one they needed to make. Yeah, Uh Really, yeah, really good points there. Good, took it a little bit back to 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 the summer and stuff to to put it into perspective. But yeah, for me, uh, as as with you, man, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the player. Um, it's probably, as you said, you know, if not the Excuse best me. left wing back in the league, uh, one of the one of the top left wing backs in the league. Um, 27 years of age, you know, right in his prime that we we in in theory getting him. Um, has become a starter for the German national team as well. Um, a powerhouse, a beast when it comes to you know the physicality. He's a specimen. The numbers he's been putting up the last few seasons. Uh, last season he had eleven goals and six assists. I, I mean, mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, we uh, joke. You and me joke about <clears throat> privately how Denzel Dumfries is a striker. Well, then what the hell is this guy? I mean, they're yeah. both. They're very similar. I mean, Inter's wing backs are two very big people. Yeah, and they know, and they know how they're good in the air. They know mm-hmm. how to score. They're good crossers. Now, Dumfries Gosens is is, is <laughs> quite, that is good. That yeah. is, you know that is good. And if they can keep Perisic at a lowered wage, and and I mean Darmian, and then you have Di Marco, who'll probably mostly play left centre back, but who can also play in that position. I mean, they're set on the. I mean, the wings are set. Yeah, um, there's no doubt about that. <clears throat> yeah, and that's a. Uh, I mean. Just finishing up, it's like, yeah, I'm very happy about the deal. Uh, it depends, as you said. Let's see if it's like, if it's 30, then it's a little bit, yeah, it's getting to, you know, a bit expensive for, you know, for what, what he is. But, you know, that's his value on transfer market around. He's valued at 31 million. Uh, it's the injury issues that I'm a little bit concerned about. And a few people are commenting here about this season. He's had two serious or semi-serious kind of um, hamstring injuries that have stopped him play, playing. You know, he's missed you know, almost um, four months there in terms of, and it's still ongoing, the current one, the current hamstring issue. Is that worrying to you? Because obviously we know with buying players with injury issues, Correa already had a bit of an injury issue when we bought him and that was already a bit of a red flag. But he's had more injury issues at Inter already than he had in the past. So <laughs> is this is this a, a red flag without slandering my boy too, too much? Well, it's, it's an in, it's, it is a valid point because... I mean, I'm look. I looked at his injury record before, and aside from it's, um, I mean, aside from the fact that he, you know, he's these two last, um, these two last injuries that he had. Oh yeah, it's pretty spotless um, before that. I mean, that's that's what that's the saving grace here for me. Yeah. 
Um, but and, and I mean, and it's two in a row, it's two hamstrings. I mean, I think that's something that when you do medicals, they will probably do a proper yeah. examination of that and look at the, 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 the extent of that, that injury and the extent of which damage has been done to his hamstring. Um, and, and I think that's when they, I think that's, that's the only place where I worry if this deal kind of falls apart. I mean, if they discover something that is like, oh, hang on a minute, we can't buy this guy. Mm -hmm. I can't give him, give the clean bill of health because of his hamstring. But I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, he's back to training from what I've understood. Um, so he's, he's scheduled to be back by, they're saying around the end of February, they're saying. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know he's doing rehab or something like training rehab and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, fully fit by the end of February, fair enough. But regardless, I don't think Ink they need to rush things with him. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can actually afford to give him the time that he requires to fully reintegrate himself into this team. I think there's no, you I mean, know, between Perisic, Darmian, and Di Marco, you're kind of already set there. So I don't, I don't see the need to rush him into anything. I say this is a this is a this is a long term thing as well. I mean, he's only 27, 28 years old. Yeah, the, and the, just a quick on King Dory and the Semper Inter podcast is uh, is is back. Yeah, right? we yeah we recorded it yesterday. Raúl, you were on there, and we we will be uh, we'll, I'll be publishing it tonight and and tomorrow morning. And yeah, um, if you could just tag where people can find it, I'm so shit at stuff like that. So if you can do that, I'll be very grateful. Bro. Yeah, yeah, no, you, no worries. Be my that. boomer assistant that you always are. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I, as I said, I'm not too worried about it, as you said because before that they had never had any injuries, so I don't think we should look too much into. It. I'm sure, yeah, as you said, the medical they'll they'll figure it out if it's like a is a serious issue, and I'm sure then you know Spinazzola style they'll cut the deal short if it, if it looks like it's an issue. Um, but speaking on Perisic, you know, as you said, we don't need Gustin's right now. Um, uh, although you know, with color of uh, is the color of thing done by the way? Is he yeah, definitely, he's going to, yeah, he's going to. Um, I think the I think he quite, I mean, he's so down the pecking order. I mean, it's not even he's not he's not been injured. I just want to let everyone know he's not injured, right? There's no injury here, it's just that he's not, <clears throat> he was, um, he's just not, um, he's just not part of the you know. Um, he's just not part of the part of the project, and no. the only reason they extended in the first place was because they because of the role he had in the dressing room. That was ideal. He's a cheerleader. Yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> but you have to. I mean, he is old, um, but he's got lots of experience. I mean, he's won yeah. a lot of things with with you know in, in his career, and he knows what it takes. And and so they you know they they decided that you know it's good to have a commanding presence especially when you have someone like Conte leave that can usually create a void and 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 so they wanted to kind of maintain the balance of the dressing room moving you know allowing <laughs> just water <laughs> jesus christ um no so they but you know they probably wanted to just kind of make that transition as easy as possible on mm -hmm. Simon Zaghi and now they've seen that there's no need to do that yeah, um, and on, on on that point, so Kolarov is gone. So Di Marco, as um, you know, Mo asked, yeah, Di Marco now he's going to be the full time yeah. Bastoni yeah. backup. I think so. I think so. And I mean, yeah. uh, given look, what many people remember, oh, say, oh, he's too good to be on the bench. No, no, Inter have you know, this is Inter. They they're supposed to compete on three fronts. They need to have twenty two players of a somewhat similar quality, and I think Federico Di Marco. Uh, Inter kid through and through, um, coming in with that left foot of his is is perfect to do that. And let's remember, he's also really young. Yeah. So you know, there's there's still a lot of development there to be done and had. So yeah, and and I think um, answering Mo's other question, I don't think he starts over Perisic right away. No, I mean, no, no. Perisic no. is in the form of his life at the moment. No, this no, is no. the Perisic. best, most consistent I've ever seen Perisic play. Um, so I don't think there's I've any... never seen him be this much of a leader either. Yeah. I mean, it's like before, not even with Croatia before, he scored lots of important goals and he's been good. I think probably in terms of form wise, that World Cup final year where where that they went to Croatia, that's probably the mm -hmm. best he's ever been in terms of maybe, you know, when he peaked like as a player, but in but he's become a different player now. And that's yeah. why I think he's better than he was. He's much more mature he's a leader he really is a dressing room leader he leads the players in on and off the pod on on and off the um, the pitch and, and the way 
episode. Um, uh, you, thank you. We are. You think we're that good looking? That's great. <laughs> um, no, but um, no, it's uh, no. It's, I, I really think so. I think that's why he's been so. Um, I think that that's what makes him so much better. I think in in, in all, but all of our opinions is because the fact that he's not just doing fantastic things on the pitch. It's it's everything around it. I mean, the way that he took Denzel Dumfries under his wing. Yeah, that's not something you've seen from Perisic before at all. I mean, he's become a senatore of this mm. of this dressing room, and that's something that, I mean, let's be honest. When we were talking, remember the Cardi nonsense? We didn't. That that was not something I was expecting from from Perisic. No, even the, I I remember like this guy even put in a transfer request once, and I I really started to dislike, to dislike him after that, and I wanted him out of the club after that because he I think it was even. I think it was Arsenal at the time that he put in the. Wasn't it United? <clears throat> well, I think you know this was the pre, the one in mid season. The United ah. was in the summer, and remember, and then Spalletti convinced him or something to stay, and then, yeah. But anyway, this guy is the turnaround of Perisic's yeah. career has been crazy. But to me, yeah. um, Nima, to me, this sounds like Perisic is gone. To me, you think Cause so? Because this, this guy, you know, the is obviously as you said, obviously <clears> the winter, there would be two starter material, but. Perisic, as we know, his contract is expiring and he's on what, around 5 million net, 5.5 yeah. 5 million net. Yeah, he's not going to get that. No. Um, and he's not going to get... I mean, I can think of a situation where Inter, they go to him and say, look, we'll give you a three-year contract, but it can't be more than 3 million euros. Or you get a two, you know, one-year contract with 6 million or something mm -hmm. like that. Do you know what I mean? It's something yeah. like that. <clears throat> so... So, but but I don't think Inter want to do that, and I think Inter will probably want to say, tell him, look, you if you want to go somewhere else, you should find somewhere else. But we can't break this. But I mean, they can't. They just simply cannot. And and I think one thing that is making me the most calm about everything is the fact that this is now fully and entirely Beppe Marotta's project. There was a little bit of a doubt there when when Conte came. And Suning were really eager to spend money, and they broke the transfer record twice, bringing mm -hmm. Lukaku and Barella. And then COVID happened, and and the financial meltdown. That was them being a little bit excited and kind of deviating away from the Marotta way. This is now fully and completely a Marotta project. It's long term, sustainable, young, and financially sound. They and and, and that's that's where you need to to be. Yeah. Um, but to me, uh, why I said the Perisic thing is that that reason. So I think, you know, I've pointed out a few times this season that, you know, we've got quite a, a few times our average age of the, the squad that we put out is around 29, 29.5. Mm. Um, and now Perisic, it depends on what he wants because they're not going to renew him for five. Gosens no, no, is coming no. in and apparently <clears throat> what I've read is he's earning half. 2.5 two and million. a half yeah yeah which is absolutely insane this what and, I mean. and, and it's just that, but i mean marotta is just i don't even know i mean it's is i put out a tweet saying that you know this guy is really cementing his position as the most important and the best thing inter have done yeah. of all time mm -hmm. it's crazy how and i made that video when he when we signed him on yeah, youtube yeah, the big, big, the big player of the season, and that's absolutely true. I mean, <laughs> big player, <laughs> big player, top, top player, player. <laughs> top player, club, the top player of the club. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's really good to see, and 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 that's why I'm like so happy that he's going to stay at least to 2024, and and it's really important that he does. I think this summer is going to be one of the most consequential and important summers in, in Inter's modern oh, history, definitely because Vecino, Alexis, I mean, Kolarov's out, you got to decide on Perisic, but then it's Vecino, Alexis, Vidal, they're all gone. Um, you got to decide. Alexis on has one more year, doesn't he? I think no, no, he's got an option, they got options, both of them. Uh, oh, I yeah, I knew Vidal was expired, but I thought Alexis had one more year. No, he's he, I mean, he's been there for three years now, Alexis, hasn't he? And he yeah, the first year was alone, wasn't it? No, yeah, but no, but it, it was, it was, uh, it was a yeah, contract expires June 2023. For oh, okay, are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure that's an option that they could expire. Because I remember he, he joined in the summer of 2028, didn't he? Sorry, 2018, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that was the low in the first season. I've got yeah. it on the uh, transfer mark because okay, it says cool. June 30th, 2023 expires. Okay. Okay, well, that's because okay, okay, fair enough. Because he signed a three, <clears throat> and we signed him on a permanent, then he signed a three. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. That was in summer 19. Yeah, right. yeah. I thought it was a two plus one that he signed. 
that's maybe but that's what it says here so okay. i don't know we'll see because i because i've heard a lot about inter wanting to kind of be like thanks alexis but you know you can do one now <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's making the amount of money he's on it's nothing compared to what he was on at united oh but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i mean for inter to have i mean i like the play you know how much i like him yeah i know mean, you're he, a big he, fan you, you're like smile. with Alexis, like I'm with Correa. <laughs> yeah, no, this guy makes me smile every time he walks on a pitch because he's his football like you and the quality and class of this guy mm-hmm. is just but seven million net is a lot of money for Inter in this position is just it's not sustainable. And I think that they will look to do a uh you know a, a consensual resolution. I think he's. I think what for him it's about you know the World Cup. If Chile even make it to the World Cup, yeah. I mean, if Chile don't make it to the World Cup, I think it's going to be a termination where they he goes to some Arab country and makes one last payday, and and then that's it. Um, because then he will have won. I mean, if you know if it continues like this and Inter win the Coppa Italia, then he would have already won everything in Italy, and he's got really nothing else to prove. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Vidal, we know he's got an option. Um, <clears throat> That um, that he could extend, but there's no way Inter are taking that up. That at, again, six seven million euro net a year. It's a lot. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the, yeah. As you said, there's so many things to decide in the summer. Beppe and Auxilio are going to have a busy summer. I hope they're not going yeah, off to. I'm uh, really to excited. Beach. We had um, we had Gianluigi Longari from Sport Italia. He's part of yeah, yeah. Uh, him and Alfredo Pedula. Uh, he works closely with Pedula. Uh, and for those who don't know, Longari was the one who broke the Messi news. That Messi was going to leave PSG. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one of the best in the business, and we had him on and I asked him about his his. He was he, and he rarely speaks. He's very careful, Gianluigi. I've gotten to know him now. He's not a very he's a very soft spoken person. He doesn't say things unless he absolutely knows that they're true or that he believes in them. And he said Bremer is Inter's number one target in the summer, no doubt about that. Um, and I mean that to me is an important signing. Uh, Bremer and, and it, the example he used was very interesting. He said, "Remember how Lukaku was sold and Inter got Correa and Jeko? Mm-hmm. That's what he thinks Inter will do. They will cash in on Defray, and they'll get Luis Felipe and uh, Bremer." And and I asked him specifically about Matias Ginter because it's a player I really like, yeah, uh, more than Luis Felipe. And he was very clear at this moment. Inter are not convinced by Matias Quinta at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are far more convinced by Luis Felipe, and he's the he's their favorite, and that's the one that Marotta is keeping dibs on. So he hasn't convinced you know. me this season, Luis Felipe. I've watched him closely. No, he has not convinced <laughs> me either. He's been. I liked him. Uh, I liked him under Inzaghi. I was like, you know, he's mm. got he's got some talent, but maybe it's this. You know, Lazio have been pretty. Awful in general, but he's just not convinced me at I all. I don't think he. Ple- I don't think he can perform well in a back four. And I no. think that you need to. I mean, it's like it's like Bremer. I think Bremer. We've only seen the back three, and he's a monster. <laughs> what um, what a monster, though, man. <laughs> no, he's. I mean, it's. Uh, you know how much I love Ivan Juric, so obviously yeah. I've watched every single Torino game. This guy is something else. I, I I I can't remember the last time I saw a twenty-four-year-old central central defender be this dominant. No, if, if we sign every we sign single Bremer, one. man, our our defensive line can move like 10, 15 meters <laughs> up ahead because this guy will cover for everyone. No, he's the... he's he's just he pockets every single defender and he does it with such effortless ease. Yeah, I watched it, him it, against Kamaka the weekend and he pocketed him. I watched him against Lavovich and he pocketed him. He just against Lautaro, pockets he pocketed him. <laughs> no, he does it with he does it with everyone, mm-hmm. and he does it with such ease, and he does it without giving away free kicks and red cards that's the thing that's so impressive because he's hard as nails um he's he's a mean bastard yeah he goes in he's hard yeah. and but he never gives up free kicks uh, i mean i'm thinking him and like in some sort of like dream central three three man central defense him yeah. and romero mm. oof I mean, he just make, <laughs> you don't even need to play with a goalkeeper then. I think. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no one's getting a touch of the ball. They're just getting clattered get from behind. <laughs> exactly. No one's going near them. I mean, those, those two are just mean. And one is Brazilian, one is Argentinian. So that just makes it even more interesting. Um, no, nah, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, with the Ginter, I mean, from what I read, he's also asking for around um, 
four million net, four point five million net. So if you're bringing in Ginter, that's yeah. a. I don't think even Skriniar earns that much. So if you're bringing him mm. in for that much salary, you have to start, and I don't know if he's into starting material. No, no, that's. A, I mean, I think they could probably rather go for Bremer, who is starting material. Yeah, <laughs> and then they have Luis Felipe, who knows Simone and knows how to play in his system, and they can use him to the right as a backup of Skriniar. Yeah, and yeah, we need some more Brazilians back at Inter as well. It has been a has yeah. been a while. And we're getting a German left wing back. I mean, that's that's my childhood, Andy Bremer. Ah, seen... yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that is that is really like nostalgic for me in my generation of Interisti who became Interisti because of that the yeah. trio. So that's really interesting. No, I'm 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 really happy about this Gosen situation. I just hope that his that they don't rush him back. That they give him the time he needs to yeah. to fully recover and. I look at it like this, a little bit like Christian Eriksen when he was born in January. I look at it more as a signing for next summer, like for next se- for next season, excuse me. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's just uh, you, they'll give him these. Obviously, he's not even available straight away, so they'll give him a few months to get integrated. <clears throat> uh, it's more about securing him because obviously in the summer yeah, he's one year left. Yeah, so. no, 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 no. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to go there. That's why Vlaovic and 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 Juve have kind of they've gone from yeah. Uh, Ivar makes a good point that I kind of thought about when, you know, go, with Gosens, I feel like we've mentioned that he's very similar to <coughs> uh, bless you, um, oh, where they're both like horses, you know, they're both, you know, they'll, they'll go up and down and we saw, you know, <laughs> the power that Dumfries gives you, but do you not feel, I feel this this could be a thing that um, Gosens himself, like we'll have a look at his stats in a minute, he's not much of a uh, a dribbler or someone that really goes past people, no. uh, neither is Dumfries. I mean, he finally did it where he got that half a yard to get that cross in against um, uh, Venezia the other day. But if, don't you feel like it would be two guys that are very similar in the end? Both of them are like amazing in the air, as you said. They both like to get into the box, but they're not particularly build-up wing-backs. They're both... You know they they get they get involved at the end in the final third if you know what I mean. But that's how, I absolutely know what you mean. I think that's but that's how Inter play. Inter don't build up by the wing backs really. Yeah, they build up much more centrally. Uh, it's much more Barella, Chalanoglu, Brozovic who, yeah. who build up. The wing backs are a little bit almost as as we've said. I mean they're they're like fourth strikers, mm-hmm. and now you have two of them, um, which is and they're they're good in the air both of them. Um, so now it's the Inter are going to be really difficult if they can if Gosens is free and they, uh, sorry is, is fit and they've got Dumfries and Gosens on the wings that I mean those are that that's essentially you know though they will score 10 12 goals I think I think Dumfries has had a little bit time to adapt and and and, and so now he's really coming coming to his right mm-hmm. but he's a he's a monster I mean the one when I say that he gives me my con vibes I mean, just <laughs> the sheer power. Yeah. Remember Mykon's power? Yeah. Like not not so much, I mean, the technique, because obviously there's no discussion if we're comparing <laughs> technically Mykon and Dumfries. I mean, come on. But but if we're comparing in terms of the power and athleticism, mm. they are very similar. I, I think Dumfries has got quite the hell of a shot on him as well. Um, so now I, it, it'll be a very, it'll be a very, Inter will be bullying teams on the wings. And then, yeah. you, I mean, the thing that I like a lot that we saw under Antonio Conte, which Simone Inzaghi has kind of continued, when you see Skriniar and Bastoni as well, or Di oh. when they bring up as well, I mean, that that is something that's going to be really difficult for teams to defend against. And that's something that they're going to have to deal with. Because with Dumfries, Gosens, Bastoni, and Skriniar helping out, it's Inter are going to rip defences apart. Even if you park the bus against Inter, it's difficult to defend against defenders who come with pace from deep and you have a midfield that they can play off of. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've got a Scamacca, which we know again, Gianluigi Longari said that Inter are in pole position to sign him and Fratesi. Mm-hmm. Then you have a tank in the middle as well. Who's now in Inter, are in, look, Marotta's building something very, very interesting. He's cooking. Beppe's cooking. <laughs> Beppe's <laughs> cooking and the cooking is good. <laughs> um, yeah, my boy Perisnic also tweeted earlier. Speaking of the Bastoni potential Ghostens mm-hmm. connection, they they seem to be quite close off the pitch as well, oh, really? uh, which always helps. You know, a Bastoni being a youth product of Atalanta, so that's where the connection comes. That that's nice to see already. I just love that that the funniest thing I've ever. I mean, Skriniar saying that he Skriniar's nickname for Bastoni, Jerry the Giraffe, is hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. 
absolutely laugh out loud, piss yourself funny. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but it is. <laughs> it's really Jerry the giraffe. <laughs> and I mean, it's just. Like, yeah, it's just, some of the banter within the squad is uh, it looks <laughs> looks like some top, top bands. Class. Yeah. I mean, just just how Brozovic terrorizes Barella, it's genuinely funny. <laughs> dove dove say, say, pare, pare, dove say. I mean, it's just <laughs> he, he absolutely terrorizes him, and it's just really really <laughs> funny. It is like when you see Barella saying "la chamin pace," he means that. Leave me alone. Like <laughs> it's just leave me alone. He gives up. Like he's got three kids at home, and then he's sharing rooms with an actual with a giant baby as well. It's Literally, <laughs> Literally, yeah. But um, going back to um, Gosens, as I was saying, I'm going to bring his uh, stats up from FB Ref, and when I when I pull him up, I honestly, if, if you didn't tell I me this see. is Gosens, oh sorry, but I'll wait. If I you can't zoom see. in. Oh, now we go. Thanks. Yeah. What does it say? So he's basically like looking at a striker stats. So he's got, yeah, he's in crazy. the 99th percentile <clears throat> when it comes to goals per 90. So this is over 365 crazy. days. Um, so because I couldn't get his stats from this season because he's only got yeah. a few minutes this season. But look at that non penalty yeah. goals. He's in the 99th XG, non penalty XG, uh, shots on target, oh, shots geez. on target percentage, <laughs> average crazy. shot distance. So he shoots from like, you know, within the inside of the box. Um, is, it's yeah, like the 1950s. It's like it's like the 1950s football where you had like strikers, left strikers and stuff. It's crazy the stats. Yeah, I mean, if you gave Lautaro these stats, uh, you'd, you'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if you could get Lautaro to do that. Yeah. No, it's. I, I have to say, I I I really think that this is a summer where Lautaro Martinez departs. I, I really think, think so too, bro. I've been I've been disappointed uh, with Lautaro. I've been talking about it on my channel for a little while because I was on the. Um, I was like giving him the confidence of this year. Yes, come on, you can be the main guy. He hasn't shown it until now, but I thought you know this could be the year. But he just he hasn't taken that step yet, and he can probably he maybe will take it one day. But we haven't got the time to wait. You know, he's 24, but maybe he will take it by the time he's 28, 29, like as we've seen the strikers. But we don't have that much time, do we? No, and also I think that when I look around in Europe and I see what is happening with mm -hmm. Kylian Mbappé at PSG, who's going to leave mm -hmm. uh, on a free transfer to go to Real Madrid. I think it's almost a foregone conclusion, as far as I'm concerned, that Holland is going to Real Madrid. That Then I look at PSG and I'm thinking, OK, Messi's there, Neymar is there, Mauro Icardi's there, mm -hmm. and they can't get rid of him, but they're not going to, they're not going to start with him. And then they're thinking, okay, well, who w walks into this team and can play with Neymar, Messi, Icardi? There's only one player. It is Lautaro. It makes perfect sense in every in every sense of the word. In every aspect that I look at, I look at it tactically. I look at it in terms of off the pitch. Lautaro gets on with every one of those players and, and those people. So, to me, I I think it's um, I think this is again, Beppe Marotta when he extended his contract was pretty much saying, look you know <laughs> he was he, i think it was a little bit of nod and a wink saying yeah okay sign the contract we'll sell you to psg next summer uh pretty much okay um, interesting so, so i i don't know i feel like you know one of these the boss uh, rumors i feel like are going to flare up again unless you know yeah you but they don't have that money I, I you see that's the thing though i look at barcelona i actually for once like what i see when i see the barca project when i look at that squad because Gavi, Pedri, I like Ferran Torres. I re I like what they're building. They're going back to their roots. Yeah, they're exactly. building a, a Barca squad, of, which is pretty much a Cantera, uh, La Masia football, and Xavi's going to oversee that. I think that will actually do them well in the mm -hmm. long run. And I think they're doing absolutely right to get rid of all this, you know, all this galactical nonsense post Messi. And I think it's right. I just don't see Lautaro there. But Lautaro at a PSG flanked by Messi and Neymar is is a team that that satisfy i mean with hakimi already there you know we know that they get along yeah. um so now for me it just ticks every box and and i and we all know how much leonardo loves buying spending cash and buying in the city are and he'll oh, do God. that he'll do that one i'm sick of that, that guy man <laughs> leave us alone <laughs> We know. We, I mean, he literally like looks at the set. I mean, so so we know what's going to happen. He's going to buy at least one Serie A player. So yeah. um, I, I think I think I think we're going to see the big hundred million signing in the transfer in the summer come from there. And then what does Beppe do with that money? 
Mm-hmm. I think it's quite clear. He sends someone like Van Huysden, Pinamonti, and Al Gomer to Sassuolo, and he just picks Raspadori, Scamacca, and Fratesi. Mm-hmm. And then he yeah, was still have on PF, uh, PIF, uh, Nima. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, I'll have Next week. No, no. My favorite. No, no. Did you miss that? I, I forgot to send it to you. He sent it la- last week saying Monday. And then yesterday, he said Tuesday. It's like, I'm starting <laughs> to respect this guy. Cello Camwell is my hero. Like, I'm really starting to think that that is just someone taking the piss now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I remember when, when what's his name? When, you, when, when, when Rocky, when he did that hilarious thing with the Spurs, with the Spurs fans about oh, yeah. <laughs> the Spurs account, which I knew it was him. I just knew it was him because the way the guy tweeted, I was like, I'm starting to think that it's someone that we know who's just taking the piss out of everybody. I know, I'm like, starting to think that as well. Because <laughs> I mean, it's like you can't do what he does. Um, as it, like, <laughs> like he, he does it shamelessly with a straight face, it's just so funny. It's like, what you, it's just oh, like, it's quite clear. I mean, either that or he's just like the biggest charlatan on earth. That could be that could be true as well. It's probably more likely that one, yeah. I would say. But, it, but it's absolutely hilarious that the way this guy shamelessly just pretends that he hasn't been banging on the drum. And it's, I mean, I, I follow him now because for comic relief, because I think it's absolutely hilarious when he beats his bullshit out. <laughs> I, I laugh my ass off. It's, it's hilarious. It's so, so good. Um, going back to what, what we were talking about, like going back to my Perisic comment, um, Nima. So I think he's I think he's going to leave at this point <coughs> because we've signed Ghosts now for half the wage. You think so? I think so. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I think it's more likely than not that he leaves. Yes. I think... What if if he does? Do you see the Costage thing happening then? Do you see a potential Costage um, no, Perisic no, I think, duo? I think Gossens Gossen eliminates Costage, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because then think... you'd, you'd have to pay another what 10, 15 million for costage yeah, as well. No, to me, to me, it's like I think at the end of the day, I think they'll sit down with Ivan Perisic in May once the Scudetto, inshallah, has been won, <laughs> and, and the Coppa Italia as well. And they'll be like, "Look, this is our plans for the summer. This is what we want to do. You're going to be one of the leaders of this squad, as you already are." Mm-hmm. Um, and you know they'll work something out because I think that. What, what he's doing is I, th- I think they're going to g- make him a much more important fella uh, yeah <laughs> I love German football for sure mm-hmm. um, but no no I, I think it's, it's just my hunch is my hunch is just that I feel like financially just there's too much of a difference between what Gosens earns and Perisic and I just don't see it into keeping Perisic there if he's gonna well, it, dep- he, it depends he, what he yeah. wants yeah yeah exactly i mean if they sign a one year contract and tell him look for one year three and a half can you do that mm-hmm. so oh thank you benjamin no uh, um you know it's um no it's i, I think it's more uh, i think it's something like that i i think it'll come down to perisic being looking at that squad and looking and saying okay we've played some really bloody good football this year mm-hmm. we've got a very interesting squad this is a squad I'm not they're not favorites to win the Champions League but they actually can do something in Europe okay. with this team um and I I think at the end of the day he'll be like okay and I'm going to be like one of the senators of this squad the, the, that that I think will appeal to him I really do yeah no, no I hope so I hope so it's just uh, I hope I'm wrong on that one it's otherwise just... you'll probably go to probably Chelsea or Spurs I mean the thing <laughs> the thing is with Spurs which I find so hilarious is they have absolutely no idea what is coming for them. And every Inter fan does. We've seen this movie before. And I can say as someone who studied Antonio Conte closely, <laughs> I've never seen him this angry. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he is foaming at the mouth. Every, like, he, you can tell him that it's taking every ounce of self-control for him every time he's asked a question <laughs> not to lose it. And, and, uh, and Amrabat <laughs> is not going to calm him down. <laughs> I think I think what's his name Traore and Amrabat will put a little bit. I, I mean, what he wants, we know what he wants. He wants Kessie, he wants Lukaku, he wants De Frey. These are the yeah. players he wants. I I wouldn't be surprised if we if he finished with them in the top four, and just like he did after Atalanta, when Inter finished second, when when everyone's coming up to him all happy and oh congratulations Antonio, what an achievement, and they're just met with this tsunami of shit. 
that just rains down on them when he's upset and he's been quiet and now he can't hold it in anymore and he just lets fly. That's that's what I think is going to happen. And at that point, it's going to become a situation where, okay, what do we do? Do we do we placate the man child, yeah. or does he once again move away? <laughs> Bro, it's going to be so interesting. It's going to be watch. funny. I'm not missing that post match press yeah. conference at the end of the season. It's for so all nice. The money in the world. <laughs> I'm even prepared to pay for Spurs TV to watch it. Like yeah. I need to watch Conte's post season meltdown, which is coming. It, it is, is coming. coming. It is coming. <laughs> <laughs> see, did you see him last night? Like last week when he's like, he's, but he doesn't even look at the journalists anymore. Like he's, <laughs> like he's, he's looking down like this and just oh, grunting. No, I didn't see last him. night. <laughs> so funny. He's going to I don't, it. I don't miss that. I'll be honest. I'm a big no, I don't fan. miss it either. <laughs> I do not miss it either. I do not miss it. It's funny. It's like a friend of mine tweeted this, DM me, texted me going, as funny as it is, I'm so grateful we're not there anymore. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is not our headache anymore because it's not a nice place to be at. It no, really no, is. No. Yeah, it's he nice. Though. I mean, Inzaghi's kind of, you know, he's boring, but at least, like, it's, he's, he's sane. sane. He's not yeah. boring. He's sane. No, he's boring. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> my open is okay. My open is okay. No, because <laughs> he like, talks like a normal human start. being. Yeah, but, but you can't so start you every single me. sentence with that. Like, every single, <laughs> my open is well, okay. You like, know what you, so you think. conditioned and so conditioned to Spalletti's madness and Conte's, Conte's in, emotional instability that when a normal human being comes along that talks and acts like a normal human being <laughs> we're also we're so like damaged goods that we think he's boring no yeah. he's just normal that's all he is he's sane he's a normal human being like, that's <laughs> all he is <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm surprised actually Chelsea or like one of these Premier League teams, well actually Newcastle were going for him, but yeah, I'm surprised that Gerson didn't receive much of Premier League attention because he's like custom made for a Premier League really. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm I'm glad I'm glad for that. Yeah. Um oh yeah, they're talking about potentially Luis Diaz as well. I've seen today. That would that would appeal yeah, to Porto sure. have been pretty pretty clear. Pay the pay the uh, the the redemption fee clause or piss off. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. That's that's pretty much what they've said, and and you don't mess around with Porto. Don't mess around. Porto know how to take get. Porto know how to get paid for their players. They don't oh. care. They <laughs> we know. Don't care. We, we know exactly. We know. Porto don't mess around. They Benfica and Porto Portuguese clubs know how to get paid. You're sporting, bro. Please, <laughs> Mario. <laughs> oh God, no. I forgot. Forty four million. Oh God. Anyway, PTSD. Um, yes. Everyone's like, on a lot of the questions I've seen are about Dybala, so let's get into the mm -hmm. Dybala. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, that's related to what's going on at Juve with Vlahovic. So let's touch on those both on those things. Um, I already made a video about Vlahovic on my video on my channel, so you can you can go ahead <clears> with that. You know, I'm a big Vlahovic fan, so I'm salty as hell about he that. Yes, no, I, 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 for me, it was always going to happen. Um, the way I my read on the situation is very is very simply like this. Mm -hmm. It was. The only club that Vlaovic wanted to go to in Italy was Juventus. That was absolutely clear, and I think it's been clear for about two years. When last summer Atletico Madrid came with that offer, he was open to going to Atletico Madrid, and I think he was he was also open to going to Man City. Mm -hmm. Those were the clubs, the kind of clubs that he wanted to go to. But when they quickly realized that, that we, but they managed to kind of con when when Comiso decided to decline the Atletico Madrid offer. They they pretty much said okay, then it's Juve, and then they basically tricked Comiso because what they, you know, it was quite obvious he wasn't going to extend, but they mm -hmm. made him made him a verbal promise, and they may gave signals that no Vlaovic could think he could, is is open to extending his contract with Fiorentina, and that's kind of part of the reason that Comiso declined the offer from Atletico Madrid, which was a very very good offer. So they completely played him. And that's why yeah. he's so angry. And and but it, but it's happened twice in a row now with Comiso, and he, that he's been made to look like a fool uh, in a deal with Juventus. And I mean that comment, his very very com very very first comment. I'm not, <laughs> you know, when he took over Fiorentina, I'm never going to sell. I'm not going to repeat the Roberto Baggio mistake. I wouldn't sell Chiesa to to Juventus for for a hundred million even. I want to keep him for this year and at least one more year and more than that. Well, he, he wasn't, I guess technically he wasn't lying because he didn't sell Kiesa mm -hmm. for 100 million. He sold them both for 135. I mean, it's just, it's absurd. 
um, and paid in like five pound a month. Oh and, my god, <laughs> that, the Chiesa deal is just. I mean, you you talk about Juve Juventismo Juventism in, in first year loan four million, second year seven million, third year they have to buy him for forty million euros, and then you add after that ten million euros to be paid on performance bonuses. So in yeah. total, sixty million to be paid over four, five, six years. It's in. I mean. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's like you got you know you never know when you've been tangled, Rocco. Like you got tangled twice. Um, so <clears throat> now nah, it's we'll have to wait. I mean now now they've made it clear that they're they've agreed on seventy five million price tag, mm -hmm. but the formula and that's the one that matters really. I mean if it's going to be another two scoops of green green ice cream over you know, 30 euros paid over five years to be paid every other month when Jupiter is in Pisces. And I mean, it's, <laughs> it, these, these Juve, this is the Juve deals that Juve get. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but what do you make of it in terms of as a player though? Do you think he moves like, obviously the, uh, for me, it looks like a desperate move to go all <laughs> in to get top four, to, to get a top four finish. Well, I think they don't want to miss out on that. Yeah, that I mean, I, I think it's a combination of things. I think he is. They look at how Allegri's playing, playing. They look at how Allegri's brought back the old Juventus style or still a Juve. Because I mean, if you know your Juve history, Juve have never played champagne football. No. Juve from Trapattoni to Lippi to Allegri himself, it's always been very pragmatic. Winning is the only oh, thing in the football. I mean, it's you know, it's always been like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Milan. Milan with Berlusconi and even before that with Nerio Rocco, it was about playing attractive football, Arigo Sacchi, you know, you're supposed to press high and all that. That's not Juve's DNA. Uh, Paratici was the one who tried to say, say, change that and ended up in absolute disaster. They're going back to that. And he sorted them defensively. I mean, he's made fucking Rugani and De Chilio look class again. That is, unbel that is unbelievable. That's that's all Allegri's organization. And then they look at that and they say, well, clearly, this is the football we want to play, but we're missing a natural... We need a goal scorer because Alvaro Morata is not that guy. Mm -hmm. Well, then you go and get a 21-year-old who scores for fun and, above all, has resale value. That's Juve again. Juve do this. Let's remember, Juve sold Roberto Baggio to Milan. Juve sold Zinedine Zidane to Real Madrid. This is what they do. This is, for me, this is classic Juve back to basics Juve, Juve going back to their roots and, and building like that. They, go, they got Chiesa, they got Vlaovic, they got Locatelli. They're, they, they've got De Ligt already there. Now this, this is classic Juve. They're building for, the, for, for their future to, 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 to dominate in, in, in Italy again. And I, I, think, I think, I mean, I thought, you know what I think. I thought they were going to finish top four regardless before Vlaovic arrived. I think yeah. they're certain for it now. And just remember, the last game of the season is Juve Fiorentina. <laughs> I mean, oh wait, is, is it is it in Florence or Juve? I think it's in, in Turin. I think it's in Turin, um, or is it in? I can't remember. But that's the last game of the summer of the season. Oh, it's, a Flor it's in Florence. It's in oh Florence. I mean, oh my god, it's yikes! Well, the reception's going to be uh, interesting. But just to touch on that DiBala thing. Look, I yeah. a lot of people think, oh, this means that Dybala will leave. Not necessarily. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because Morata will leave. He, he's the one that the Vlaovic budget is. Okay. Uh, so, so Morata is pretty much going to leave for Barcelona as soon as this is over. Okay. Um, then it's time to get Dybala. And, and I mean, who doesn't love Paolo Dybala as a footballer? Bro. I, I mean, he regardless, he's one of those players that, regardless for he who he plays for, mm -hmm. you just love watching play when he's fit. He's he's, yes. he's stunning, but I do don't I don't think that he would suit Inter. And why do I say that? Really? Because in, yeah, because Inter press high up the pitch. DiBala walks on the pitch. He doesn't press anymore. Allegri doesn't press that high up the pitch. And therefore, Dybala, Vlaovic, Chiesa would work um, because the I don't think do we press that much, especially under Inzaghi. It's like a mid, mm -hmm. like a more of a mid block. Mm, I don't know. I, I you, you even you know you you have you have different kinds of press, but Dybala just doesn't press. Even Jeko runs 
God bless him. But he's a luxury. He's a luxury player, though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I I just don't think he doesn't fall into. In my opinion, the way I see it, of course, Marotta would would he wouldn't be doing his job if he didn't contact him, and he said so himself, pretty mm. much. That when you have a player like that, uh, that is on available on a free transfer, you have to do a bit of you know you have to do your do you have to check it. Yeah. But um, I don't think he'll leave Juve. I think this is all just a kind of Juve, cl- you know, cleaning out. Um, and I think they're cleaning out Ramsey. They're cleaning out, you know, all this, you know, all this stuff that they don't want. Uh, there's now talk of Bentancur or Artur Melo leaving. Mm-hmm. And this, 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 and Nahita Nandes was linked to us coming yeah. in. Um, and also, I saw this crazy rumor about Frank Kessier. And if Frank, if if Juve signed Frank Kessier on a free transfer. I think we need to put all our Milan friends on suicide watch. I don't think they can handle that. Oh my god! No, I'm um, <laughs> the meltdown that would ensue. Like me, like that would be. I, I don't think I, I'd be like seriously. That that would that would the the shit would hit the fan big time if that happened. I still don't think it will. I think they will. They will try to. I think his agents want to, want to move him to PSG or or or, or a Premier League club because that's yeah. where the money is. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to pay 10 12 million euros a year anymore. I don't think anyone in Italy will for a little while now. I don't think mm. those salaries they'll take a they'll take a little bit of time to get back to those levels, and it probably will exactly. be Juve again. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they own their stadium, for yeah, one. exactly. There's just, there's just too much of a revenue difference. I mean, the Fiorentina sporting director, him, he himself like admitted that their revenue. They <laughs> per year is 70 million, so they're gonna get the exact amount they make in a year. From one player now, um, you know, it's mm. doesn't you can't compete with that, can you? Mm. No, it's you know you can't. But I mean, I, I I still don't think that. I think in the end, what will happen is Dybala will extend with with Juve because um, he looks fitter than he's been in a long time, and I think that's the key. And when you with Juve looking to, I'm mean, thinking in a couple of weeks when they when they're in the top four because they they, don't, they they play Atalanta, but other than that, they've got a really easy fixture list coming up mm-hmm. and and when they're in that top four position i think they'll okay they'll kind of do what they always do and kind of take a breather and then sit down and talk again and until then dybala will be the guy who they will look to to lead them together with vlaovic and if that works out i don't see how yeah yeah, Cassie to Tottenham, that makes a lot of sense on the on the Conte. Um, well, if Conte happens. stays, I mean, that's stays the there, thing. Yeah. I mean, if he doesn't completely does do a Conte and fry and throw everyone under the table. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree. And well, I, I don't, I don't think they'll make top four. To be, I think, I think Atalanta will hold on to top four. You think opinion. so? I think Atalanta won't. Um, I, I, when I look at that, I, I mean, my, the way I see the Serie A table is like this: the the, the Scudetto is between Napoli and Inter. I think the wind has completely gone out of Milan's sails. Napoli are looking like a team that are, are just as exciting as they were in the beginning. Mm-hmm. There's a real zest about how they play. Uh, Osimhen is back. Anguissa is back. Yeah, yeah. Um, Insigne, now that his future is sorted, he's kind of relaxed. He's looking much more comfortable in his skin. And, and it's like this is his last tour de, you know, the the last you know night with a gang kind of thing and he's mm. you know much more everyone is much more relaxed around Napoli um and and they play really good football Lobotka has been doing really well Ruiz is outstanding Zielinski's great um Lozano's you know calmed down and started delivering now they're looking really good I, I'm looking at that Napoli Inter game I mean if, if, first you got to win the derby of course but uh, that is that I think will decide the scudetto. Whoever wins between Napoli and Inter, I think will win it because if yeah. Inter go into that game, look, is there is a possibility that Inter could go into that game and maybe have one or zero points afterwards. Then, then, then the scudetto is up for grabs again, and people should remember that. Um, but yeah. when I look at Milan, I think they will they will they will manage to finish in the top four. But Atalanta, the reason I say why I'm, I'm a little bit worried about Atalanta is because they've changed how they play. They, I mean, this is when a coach mid-season is trying to change the balance and structure of a team for something better, um, which 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 is what Gasparini is doing. I mean, you saw the four-one-four-one he played against Inter. I was completely shocked by that, um, and and that's something he's trying to give them the bad defensive balance that they that they don't have. 
and he's trying to build from that. And I think if any club in Italy in the top four, in the top five, could survive not playing in the Champions League one season, the best it would be Atalanta. Um, they they are they you know they 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 will sell I don't know some teenager to Manchester United for sixty million euros and you know <laughs> and then that's fine that's that sorted but no I I I I look at them and I see them a team that draws a lot they don't win as much they don't lose as much either but he's changing things and I'm and I'm looking at Juve who are they're going for it and I think Milan will manage to survive and Napoli I I'm they I consider them the main Scudetto threat. Mm, yeah, no, Napoli definitely uh, are up there. I, just, I feel I don't know Pioli's work at Milan just impresses me. Um, I don't know how he's doing it. He's a, he's a oh, it's incredibly, inc- it's so impressive. And and what we've always, you know, I called it the Pioli high that you know goes up and it just crashes down. But he's worked wonders there. Mm-hmm. Um, how he complete? I mean, he's really done the best with that squad. There's nothing more you can ask of Pioli. I really no, no, don't. No. Like I. No. I <laughs> What else do you want him to do? Yeah, this is giving him peanuts. Like today, you know, we're signing Gosens and then Juve signing Vlahovic and they signed some like unknown kid called Lazetic or something. Yeah, from Red Star. Yeah. Yeah, and and, I mean, that that is also something they need to sort out because Giroud has been a disaster. Zlatan physically or footballing wise has something to give but his body doesn't seem to take it Yeah, his body's telling him, please. (laughs) please, (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. And it's like, so they have a problem. They have a striker problem they need to address in the summer, for sure. Yeah. Um, go, they, going back to be? Inter, bro, I saw your tweet yesterday, which was you took a little excerpt from uh, Inter's, um, the statement mm. they released about FFP, the financial fair play. Are you worried <laughs> about that in the, in any way? Do you feel like that could affect us? Question from I don't, I didn't like, I don't like when Inter express themselves like that. I understand that they had to put out a statement expressing what, what the situation and how it is, but I don't like when they express themselves that we don't know how to interpret if we have violated and if there yeah, will like be they were being very flimsy, very wishy, very flimsy and very very diff- like weak. Mm. That's a weak statement that I don't want to see from Inter at all. That means that they're insecure somehow, and they shouldn't be because they have been very very open and I mean they they have a strategy financially but I mean this is one of those things that if UEFA decides to sanction Inter they will have to go after 50 other clubs yeah and if they do well every single one of those clubs should bloody hell s- s- appeal it because when you have PSG doing what they've done in the middle of a pandemic mm-hmm. and y- you tr- go after these clubs I mean, come on! No, I, I don't think UEFA. I don't think UEFA wants to pick that fight. I think they know that if they do, given what happened with the European Super League, which, as predicted, as I told you, they've won every single legal battle against yeah. UEFA, and, I, and and it will happen sooner or later. Um, I don't think that UEFA want to play, want to piss off these clubs so you know that much more. So I think they're probably just gonna let it slide um mm-hmm. this one and then i but i still didn't like that i no, didn't like no, same. the wording at all mm. it, it just it seemed so weak yeah uh, I why even there was no need i don't understand why that sentence was even there we don't know we can't predict any sanctions what why would you even put that there just there's no need for it if if they sanction you they sanction you there's no need for you to put out that statement that that, that sentence was just unnecessary and and that's what I didn't like because everything else was very nuts and bolts, and then that statement saying well, they even confirmed that UEFA had been in contact with them to let them know that they were in risk of. And why would you? I don't understand that sentence. I really don't, and I don't like it because no. it was, we it was very like why would you put out go on the record confirming? I I, I don't know. It's, sometimes it's better not to say anything. You know yeah, I mean? and that's usually what into under Sooning, especially they avoid they just yeah. avoid talking about stuff. <laughs> they just they just pretend it's raining. Yeah. And, and and that's been one of those good things that they've done. And 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 maybe this time they should have done that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um and then one you know topic that obviously people are asking about. We talked about it on, on the Semper Inter podcast yesterday, was um, you know, while Sensi is pretty much confirmed that he's going to Sampdoria now that he's gonna be loaned out. 
Um, what, what do you make of that? I know that you're not a fan of that happening at all, but are you worried about what the how the media is looking? <clears throat> yeah, I am. I am. I am because Vecino, Gagliardini, and Vidal are the options. <laughs> yeah, and there's a major drop off between Kachalan, Barella and Brozovic. Yeah, yeah. And and this this is just it doesn't make sense to me. Um, I, I I I don't know. I think it's an unnecessary risk. I just think it's a really unnecessary risk, especially since what's his name has been healthy, since he's been healthy now for a bit, and he even came on and he scores and he's training and there's not any problems and and he wants to go to play regularly, which means that he's in a good place physically. So I don't understand why they just can't hang on to him, and you know I, I don't understand why they can't hang on to him to June, and and then make a decision there. Yeah, I agree. But at the same time, I feel like his value as a footballer now is like zero. So at least if he gets some playing time, we can actually, in the summer, if we need to sell him on or move him on, like he can actually have some value. Because right now, no one's going to touch him. No one's going to buy a guy that's played, well, eight, I think I looked up, he's played 8% of Inter's minutes this season. Um, mm. He's clearly in the last in the packing order in the midfield because he came on last in the year. Uh, Coppa Italia when he scored and then he didn't even come on yesterday uh, against Venezia as you said so at the same time like conceptually yes he should be the backup to to Hakan really but Inzaghi's not used him like that hmm. no he hasn't and and I and I find the whole thing a bit strange and like even if you play him against Liverpool I feel like <laughs> I just see him getting destroyed like in a in no Liverpool. but that's the thing I I actually think that in the Liverpool game, that's kind of what I'm worried about because Barella's gone because of that red card. Yeah, Did it, have they announced? Actually, it was supposed to. I be... haven't. I've looked for it. I've no. yet to see how many games he is. He's gone. Well, I he's think... definitely one, but we don't know if it's two. Yeah, and they have to be able to appeal it too. Yeah. So no idea. Um, but no, it's um, it's a strange one. Um, but but I do think it's. I, I think it's too. It's, I think they're jumping the gun a little bit here on Sensi, especially after he came on against Empoli and scored the winner and looked really good um, and lively. So yeah. I, I, I just I find it strange and I get why. Okay, so they're like, okay, Korea's injured, he'll be back in a bit. And Sensi goes out, okay, we're bringing Caicedo to act as backup for Jekyll, which is much needed, yeah. by the way. But a backup for Jekyll, that is. But still, it doesn't solve your midfield future, midfield problem. Um, and no. I don't know. I mean, th it seems that they've kind of decided that they're Sipuntano, a Vidal, and Vecino, and 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 that's fine. I, that's not what I would have done. Uh, I think whenever you're you're going, when you're counting on Vidal and Vecino to save you, I, I think you're in a bad place. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it just doesn't give me confidence. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Arturo Vidal coming in replacing Barella in, against Liverpool away at Anf I mean really like we know we, well, that, we know I mean, it's probably going to be Gagliardini <laughs> well I'd rather Gagliardini than, than, than uh, fire if I go to the Anfield bro I, I'm I'm going I'm walking out if I see Gagliardini <laughs> starting I'm, I'm walking right back out of the stadium I'm get, selling my ticket <laughs> you just do a 180 and just go yeah <laughs> no no but I mean it's it is it's it's a strange one but still Gagliardini without possession yeah, in, he's in the he's defensive phase, you know, discipline. He's good. He's yeah, disciplined. Yeah. I mean, Arturo Vidal at this age and this stage of his career, gasping for air, trying to get near <laughs> Liverpool's midfield, holding his sides. I mean, I don't, I don't want to see that. It's just, <laughs> I really don't want to see that. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I think Sensi, for all his faults, he is also a player that can create something out of nothing, and yeah. you don't have that. And, and I, I, I don't know, I, I just find it strange, but obviously they think that Korea's injury isn't that serious or whatever, and I'm, I don't know. I just think it's an unnecessary risk when you go into February where your first four games are Napoli, or Milan, not, and Roma, Napoli, Liverpool. I mean, yeah. that's the season right there. I wouldn't risk it. I really wouldn't. No. Um, just finish up on uh, we've gone for an hour. Just uh, a lot of the questions were on also about you know who could be the you know in the summer the replacement for Vidal. Uh, obviously, everyone's talking about you know the Fratesis, the 
um you know they also talk about nandes like what what do you what, what do you think i think i think it's clear that we're going to go for fratesi we've already opened talks with sassuolo with fratesi i inter fans have this it's like inter fans obsession with selling galliardini can only be eclipsed or equaled by juventus fans obsession with getting rid of aaron ramsey it's not going to happen <laughs> mate he's not going yeah, he's, he, he's here until his contract ends <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not and, going and then they're going to extend it like it's just, yeah. he's, just accept the galliardini's like he's like that relative that you don't like that comes to every family gathering like he's, yeah. he's not going anywhere he's there just just deal with it um he's not going um and I think the midfield is it's going to be that's a really interesting question because I think Fratesi even if you bring in Fratesi mm-hmm. you have to make a decision on Sensi I hope they reintegrate Sensi so that means okay that that means but, but it still means that you've got two players gone with uh, Vidal and Vecino out yeah those two are definitely out so who do you bring in instead and for, if Fratesi is a young player he'll definitely want to play uh, you got Sensi who's he wants to go to the Europe. He wants to go to the World Cup. Uh, do you sell him? Do you keep him? Or do you use him to bring in someone else? I. This is again not me reporting something. This is just the feeling I had. If if Stefano Sensi has a good loan spell at Sampdoria, I wouldn't be surprised if if they try to bring in Luis Alberto from uh, Lazio in exchange for Sensi. That's just a feeling I have. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely. I mean, he wanted out in from Lazio in the summer already. Um, mm. So that's and he loves Simone Inzaghi and the football oh, yeah. that he plays. And, but I mean, but uh, once again, Nima, do you <laughs> you uh, you know on this train <laughs> about stop dealing with the Rome clubs in general? Yeah, um, but I but Luis Alberto and Sergio Milinkovic Savic are the exceptions, right? Okay. I'm talking okay. about <clears throat> I'm talking about Cucu Torea, and I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hernanes. <laughs> Oh, Hernanes and and um, sexy, sexy Karate with <laughs> with his with his lips that he I mean <laughs> that whole thing I mean what a meme that was he's he's a, he was a meme like all oh, of Zarate. that yeah do you remember did you not miss did you miss the social media posts of Zarate the blogger yeah I don't think I was uh, I was on uh, I was on Twitter yeah he, back then. he had this period where Zarate thought he was essentially some sort of they're a blogger, YouTube YouTuber, like a, like a teenage YouTuber, and he put out these photos doing duck face, which were just yeah, literally <laughs> selfies like that, and it was it was comedy, and it was like he just didn't know what to do, and laugh, and it's just oh god, no no, this guy, no Zarate Rocky, um, you know Juan Jesus, no sorry not Juan Jesus, what's his name Dodo Pires. Like well, stop, God. stop, stop buying, stop buying the tr- the inter campus Rome project must end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like nine Golan. I mean, Jesus, stop it. Like for the love of humanity, stop doing these Rome clubs favors. Um, but what about Fratesi? Do you, do you rate him? I've watched a bit and I'm and I'm I've I, I think that Fratesi is one of those players that when he, in the right environment, he can be a big star. I think if if Inter were to bring some, bring the three of them, I think that they would be they would fly together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we definitely need we need yeah we need one more. Um, so if two going out, there will be one more. Yeah, and and I I think they'll probably use Stefano Sensi as as payment for that, because I mean Maurizio Sarri and Stefano Sensi that would be work, wouldn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that would definitely work, and if he's fit and they can get her past those concerns. I think that's that's one of those deals where everybody kind of wins. Yeah. Um, and what about Agume? Would you bring him back? That's a really good. I mean, he's done well in Liga. He really has. Um, yeah. And and I read some few stats where he's like turning into this like beast, um, like in terms of dominating possession, and he's he's really taken strides. Yeah, yeah. I still think that I'd rather, given that he's such a young player. I mean, why why not send him on loan again? Like let him stay there another season. Um, yeah. And develop. I mean, clearly he's enjoying his football in France. He's playing at a level that is helping him develop. I don't see the need to bring him back, other than you know, loan him out to Brest for another season. Let him stay there. You know, if he's happy, if the club is happy, if the coach is happy, then why not let him have another season in, in the in the top flight in France and develop? I think bringing him to Italy at this stage is unnecessary. I, I think players of, his, of that young need continuity. 
I am in complete agreement with you on that one. Um, he's definitely getting there, but um, I feel like, yeah, you need to I, give I mean, it's worth it. You've got nothing to lose. You've got literally nothing to lose. I mean, if a player's happy, a young player's happy in an environment, um, and, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's uh it's uh i say let him do it let yeah. you know let let him have another season to grow because i mean we know that that, that suddenly in, in france in french football they, these players can suddenly take a giant leap um and and i think lucien agome could do that in france i really do so i think the best thing to do is let him stay there um and then you know obviously inter got lots of young players like pirola van huysden and Pinamonti, you know, you can use that. You can, you can send these other kinds of players that Sassolo would be interested in a deal, in a maxi scambio, you know, deal. Yeah. Um, as the Italians say. So I, I think that that's that would be worth it. And Pirola's had an absolutely torrid, horrid time in, in uh, Monza. Monza. It's, not, it's not gone well for him at all. And he was one of those players that everyone was. You know, in Italy, was in terms of youth and young players, they were like everyone was was going crazy over him, saying this could be the next big thing, and it's just gone so bad, and he's not been able to play. So I'd like to, I'd like to see, the, I'd like to see him leave Inter's organization for a bit, maybe. I think that would help him if he were to go somewhere where they gave him a bit more time, um, and and he wasn't tied to Inter, and there wasn't this pressure on him. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, man. Makes sense. But yeah, it's been one hour, ten minutes, bro. Uh, it's longer than I wanted to keep you for, but you've uh, been oh, very, yeah. very gracious. You've answered pretty much every question that's <coughs> come at you. Uh, I know you're still not 100%. Uh, yeah, COVID is not as fun as they make it sound, sound to be. <laughs> <laughs> Try to avoid it if you can. Not fun at all. Yeah, make sure you <laughs> avoid it. Um, yeah, anything you want to plug before you go, Nima? No, I mean, you know, you guys can follow us. I mean, Semper Inter, we do news and on YouTube, uh, we do the pod and Italian football podcast for the, the on Italian football as a whole. Yeah, no, it's you know that's it. And I'm on I'm on Twitter, always busting Rahul's balls and he's busting mine. If you want hey, people, you gotta know it's fake beef. Everyone always thinks it's real. I think it's really. hilarious. <laughs> I think it's absolutely hilarious. If they if they only saw how we talk to each other in DMs, what yeah, would they yeah. say then? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a beef. No, we just bust each other's balls, and that's fun. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> make sure you follow uh, Nima on his. Uh, that's right there, and I'll leave the links to the Semper Interpod I did with him yesterday as well in the uh, description afterwards when you yeah, send it'll it will come out me. tonight. It'll be out by tomorrow morning for everyone to check out. Yeah, a few people have been asking, so the Semper yeah, Interpod I'm sorry. will be out tonight. Yeah, there's a reason for that, and that's because of a lot of like health issues with myself and family and, and also really busy, so I've not been able to do it, so it's entirely my fault. Really yeah. sorry about that. But we're back now every Monday. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you. A shout out to the people that um, Sunit, my friend here, who's become a channel member as well. Thank <laughs> Ooh, you very nice. much. My uncle. uncle so <laughs> <laughs> my uncle from Dubai. Thank you very much. As you know, guys know, the first uh, pledge of the month goes to the Pupi Fondazione, Avia Zanetti's charity. Uh, Future Hendrix, uh, his, char his thing, he always doesn't reset for some reason. So he always has to rejoin. But thank you. And Cody, oh, new channel member as well. Thank you very much. Never seen you around, but appreciate you very much. It means a lot, your support. And uh, thank you, everyone, that tuned in today. It's been a great episode. Over 100 people were watching wow. our live stream. Oh, so, And, uh, yeah, it looks like everyone's enjoyed it. So thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you guys leave a thumbs up before you leave. Ciao, ragazzi, and always, Forza Inter. <laughs>